What is one thing you can tell a white person that'll make them glitch? The history that you've been taught with respect to anti-communism has nothing to do with the Soviet Union, has nothing to do with China. You know, the, the Red Scare and those things themselves are directly tied to the progress of the civil rights movement. And we're talking about the progress that's being made in the 1920s, the progress that's being made in the 1930s, the connections that the Communist Party of the United States of America had with the anti-lynching campaigns, as well as supporting legal defense for groups like the Scottsboro Boys uh, in, in Scottsboro, Alabama, who were falsely accused of SA, uh, as well as ensuring a push for labor rights. So this idea of, you know, communism is when I have no phone or, or, or when no iPhone or anything like that, all the stuff that you're seeing started as a response to black, Hispanic, indigenous, Asian, and Jewish people coming together. And this was a way for people in power, and it didn't matter what part of the government, whether it was state, local, or federal, it was all catered to ensuring that those groups do not get together based on class or race. And anti-communism was a way to ensure that this was not going to take place. So this TikTok by the TikToker named Token Black Guide points out something that is really important to understand because the truth of the matter is a lot of the anti-communist rhetoric that's used is very over the top and disconnected from reality. If you hear people in the United States talk about the USSR or China, you'll hear people say a lot of very obviously ridiculous things. You'll hear people basically just outright make stuff up. And the reason for that is because the goal was never really to be a truthful portrayal of China or the USSR. The goal was to sort of create this like public fear of communism more broadly. And that is because a lot of the people who are leaders within the civil rights movement and the women's movement and basically any movement for liberation across the United States, there have been a lot of them who are just openly outright communists or at very least were willing to challenge capitalism or even call themselves socialists. Just think, for example, people like Martin Luther King, who directly spoke against capitalism. Think about people like Malcolm X and the Black Panthers that were avowedly socialist group. And the reason why it's important to understand that history is basically twofold. First and foremost, you can let Red Scare propaganda get into your head when we talk about socialism. It turns out that at the end of the day, China's a pretty normal country where most people live pretty normal lives and every socialist in the United States is not calling for an exact replication of everything that China does. But we do recognize that maybe there are a few things to learn, like when it comes to, you know, mass public transit or investment in renewable energies. And then, of course, you have the Soviet Union, where over the last century, Americans quite literally did learn directly from them. And there were a lot of workers in the United States that were demanding things like gender equality, that were demanding things like ending child labor you know, things that the USSR had actually made huge gains on. People pointed to the USSR and saw that that was something that was working for working class people, that it was actually doing a lot to substantially improve most people's lives. And then you have the reality that is capitalism within the United States, which is to say white supremacist capitalism. Even if tomorrow everybody woke up not being racist at all, there are still structural barriers and societal barriers that are built into the American system to make sure that black folks are underrepresented in Congress, that black folks are un underrepresented in business and are geographically disenfranchised, which is to say that a lot of black communities across the United States, A, primarily exist because of the history of redlining, and then also B, lack a lot of access to health care, food, public transit, you know, basic necessities of life, it turns out, are all a lot more expensive. And then, of course, we have the reality that in the United States, a lot of people are racist, and a lot of those people are also incredibly wealthy and in charge of giant corporations. And when you have that, like, ultimately, the only way to truly challenge the racial inequality, and specifically the systems that maintain racial inequality, is to fundamentally challenge capitalism. I mean, think about it for one second. Let's look at one system in particular. Let's look at the prison industrial complex, which on its face is pretty hard to ignore how it depends on a ton of racism. The reason why the United States has the largest incarceration rate in the world is because we like slavery. The United States loves using slavery 
as a mode of production. It turns out that a lot of private companies basically rent out workers that are in prisons in order to get incredibly cheap labor for their goods that they're producing. And so it turns out that the interests of these giant corporations, their profit motive depends on us being incredibly racist with our criminal justice system, which is why you will see so many companies willfully put out nonsensical racist propaganda that is used to try and justify the criminalization of black existence in the United States. Now, at the same time, you have people who prop up black capitalism as though it's some sort of proof that, you know, oh, well, you know, racism isn't embedded into our system. But ask yourself, how many of those companies would be willing to tear down the prison industrial complex? How many of those companies would be actively willing to divest from the prison system? And how many of those companies would actually be willing to rally against the prison system as it is? Because the reality is that a former advisor for Richard Nixon went out and said pretty explicitly that the whole goal of the war on drugs was to target black Americans and anti-war activists ultimately boiled down to targeting a lot of the communist organizers that this TikToker is talking about. It turns out that the whole purpose of the war on drugs was to be an excuse, basically just a pretense, to make tons of people political prisoners. And then of course you have the reality that in the United States people who are incarcerated can't vote, and in a lot of states people with prior felonies are not allowed to vote. When you combine those things all together, you get this toxic sludge of not only the United States not being a real democracy because we don't have universal voter enfranchisement, but then you also get this very close entanglement of white supremacy and capitalism, where capitalists fundamentally depend on the racism that exists in society in order to make a profit. Because the real truth that a lot of civil rights activists have recognized over the decades is that fundamentally, if we're not challenging capitalism, we aren't really challenging white supremacy. And at the same time, if we aren't challenging white supremacy, we also are not challenging capitalism. And to that second point, look no further than the New Deal, which gave white Americans a huge raise. But at the same time, some of the policies of the New Deal actively stripped wealth away from black communities and undermined their position in society, which ultimately means that a lot of white Americans have the comfort they have today basically as a bribe to not be involved with any other type of radical politics that might fundamentally challenge capitalism. So if you put this all together, it becomes very clear that capitalists will always try to maintain a certain degree of racism in society because they want to use it as a tool to break apart working class movements. If we want to challenge the racist systems that we have, we also have to challenge the system that treats human beings as a commodity. Because fundamentally, what every civil rights movement and liberation movement has been about is about human beings demanding the right to be treated with dignity. And in order to do that, we have to get rid of the systems that treat human beings as commodities. This is Ben Corolla with Rebel Headquarters. You can catch my show Galaxy Brain every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time on the Young Turks Twitch channel. And you can follow me at Benjamin Corolla on Twitter.